This is the brand new Aposomicron M 35mm f2.0 and this lens is the first of its kind for two major reasons which I will explain in the course of the video. Clearly we are going to mount that lens on my Leica M10R here and I will explain all the details, we'll do a few experiments to illustrate what this lens is capable of and you will learn in the course of the video why this might be one of the best lenses for street photography and also why this might be the only lens you need for the Leica M system. And now let's kick off the video. Before I come to the main features of this new Aposumicon lens, which in my opinion really distinguish this lens from any other Leica M lens I'm aware of, Let's have a look at the lens itself. And it starts with an aperture ring like always here at the top and it has the usual clicks here marking the stops so you acoustically hear the stops. It starts at widest open f2 and then you can stop this down all the way to f16 which I should say is an aperture I hardly use on Leica M lenses. I close this down typically to a maximum of f11 and then I shoot it wider of course and you should actually shoot these lenses wide open because what's the point in having an f2.0 lens and not shooting with it wide open. Then we have here a focus ring. The focus ring is buttery smooth and there is another feature incorporated in that lens in the focus ring which I'm going to mention later in the video when the time is right. The construction of the lens is a full metal construction like always in the Leica M lens lineup and it's a beautiful lens. It's very solidly built. It looks beautiful on the Leica M10R but also on the Leica M10P and of course due to its black matte finish will also look very nice on the Leica M10 monochrome. In order to provide a few more impressions about the lens let's have a 30 second video clip where I actually did some close-ups of that lens with the Sony A7S Mark III and the 90mm Sony macro lens widest open f2.8. Leica M lenses are so fascinating to me and the reason is in one example here in front of me on the table. We have here an Aposumicron 35 f2.0, we have here an Aposumicron 35 f2.0 but for Leica SL lenses and they are both calculated for full frame sensors and uh, if you compare them now you feel the difference in weight, you see the difference in size and you get here a fantastic optical lens with superior image quality in a fraction of the weight and size than what you typically have on other camera systems including the Leica SL lineup. In particular for reportage and street photography you actually want to have non-intrusive small lenses in order not to catch attention and you can mount these Leica M lenses including this Aposumicron M of course on any kinds of other camera brands and uh, then you have basically a body in your hand and the lens will not catch any attention. It's super non-intrusive and people will not even take notice of you when you take your images. What's so special about this new Aposumicron M lens? Why am I so excited about it? And why did I say in the intro to this video that this is the first of its kind? The reason is that this is as much as I'm aware of the first Leica M lens which has a minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters and that brings the lens really really close to your subject. Now the next question people might ask is why is math so obsessed from the minimum focusing distance and uh, typically people select their lenses based on what focal length they want, what mount they need for their camera, what's the widest open aperture I can shoot with that lens and that's per se not a bad approach but I can tell you guys if you don't look into the spec sheet before investing into a lens you're making a big mistake because typically there is so much more information which is relevant. For instance MTF charts which explains to you how well the lens is performing if you move away from the center of the lens to the more borders of the lens or the minimum reproduction ratio which is something I'm covering in a moment or the minimum focusing distance because if you can get close to your subject and the reproduction ratio is high 
then you actually can use the lens in your hands also for macro type shootings. And that's a very valuable add-on, of course. Now let's put that new Aposumicon lens a little bit in perspective. And there are two other Leica M lenses, which also have a focal length of 35 millimeters. The first one I want to show is the Summicron 35 millimeter. Let's get this open for a moment. Maybe you can read this here. So this is a Summicron M lens, widest open F2, 35 millimeters, aspherical lens. It's a very good lens. I've shot this lens in various shooting situations. It's sharp, it's brilliant. You can shoot it wide open. It works very well, but it is not an Aposumicron. And Aposumicron typically stands for top-notch quality, the best of the best. And there is another 35 millimeter lens, which I currently have mounted on one of my Leica M10P cameras. And that's this one here. And this is not a Summicron, not an Aposumicron. It's actually a Summilux. This is a Summilux M, widest open now f1.4. So you actually gain one more stop open in contrast to f2.0. And it's also an aspheric lens and its focal length is also 35 millimeters. That's also a good lens. But the rule of thumb is in the Leica M systems that aposumicrons typically are much sharper than Sumilux lenses. Whereas the Sumilux lenses have this kind of dreamy look coming from widest open f1.4. If you want pinpoint sharp images, tech sharp, then you better go for aposumicron lenses or for summicron lenses if you don't have an aposumicron. But now the situation changed. This is the summicron which has been around for a long time. Now we have an aposumicron for a higher price tag, of course, but it also delivers even better image quality. Let me now come back to the minimum focusing distance. So on the Summilux 35 millimeter f1.4, we have a minimum focusing distance of 70, 70 centimeters. The same applies to the Summicron 35 millimeter, 70 centimeters minimum focusing distance. On the new upper Summicron, we have 30 centimeters minimum focusing distance. So you get twice as close to your subject. And these focusing distances, they also have implications on the so-called reproduction ratio. And the reproduction ratio on both of these lenses, the Summicron and the Summilux, they are 1 over 17.4. So that means this is a very small number and these lenses are not good for close-up shots per se. You might want to use the macro adapter for the Leica M lenses, but this typically works much better on longer focal length than on 35 millimeters. Here in contrast, you have the 30 centimeters focusing distance and you have a maximum reproduction ratio of now 1 divided by 5.6, which is almost 18% in contrast to the much smaller number we had before on the Summicron, which is a huge difference. And I'm going to illustrate this now in a little experiment to show you what that really means. In order to illustrate the difference a reproduction ratio on a lens really makes and how this relates to the minimum focusing distance, I'm going to do a little experiment. So I will go here for the Summicron 35 millimeter f2.0 with its minimum focusing distance of 70 centimeters and mount it on my Leica M10R and take a shot of the brand new Noctilux M 50 millimeter f1.2. And then I will follow the same approach with the new Aposumicron M 35 f2, but at the minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters, we'll mount it again on my Leica M10R and shoot the same Noctilux lens. And then I will compare these two images from the Summicron and the Aposumicron in post side by side. And in this way illustrate what a huge difference it makes if you have a smaller minimum focusing distance on the new Aposumicron compared to the Summicron and how the difference in reproduction ratio really changes the image perspective completely. And in return, of course, I'm saying this with a smile, everybody who watches that video needs to promise to me to never again purchase a lens without before reading the spec sheet. I'm filming this now handhold, so sorry for a little bit of shake and vibration here. The lens I'm going for first is the new Aposumicron. You see I have the aperture open at f2.0 and uh, I have 30 centimeters of distance to that Noctilux lens here. And the shooting parameters I've chosen now is the f2.0, 
1 over 30 seconds of exposure and an ISO of 100. And in this way, I will take now the shot. Let me try to get my hands free. There is a self timer here. That's it. So we have the first shot. The next step will be to remove the lens and change from aposumicron to the sumicron lens we saw before. That's the one in chrome silver here. And then removing the camera from the 30 centimeters more away from the subject to actually 70 centimeters to make sure we have the minimum focusing distance for this fellow here. And uh, then I will repeat the same shot and then we are going to compare them in post. Here are the two images we just took with these two lenses side by side. On the left hand side we have the aposumicron. We could get as close as 30 centimeters to our subject and by this also achieve the maximum reproduction ratio of 1 divided by 5.6. Whereas on the right hand side we had to move away the camera up to at least 70 centimeters and in this way achieve a completely different image and uh, a completely different look. And first of all, on the background blurriness and the bokeh, clearly if you get much closer to your subject, background blurriness is much more elevated, which you can see on the left hand side. And uh, on the right hand side, you get a three dimensional look like always on Leica lenses I'm aware of. And they've both been shot widest open at f2.0, but it is a totally different look. Looking into sharpness for a moment, so let's see if we can get here to 100% crop on the aposumicron. You see that this lens is absolutely tech sharp, super crisp, super sharp. And uh, that is typical for aposumicron lenses in the Leica lens systems as much as I'm aware of. If you look into the Sumicron, you still get a very sharp image, but it's not as crisp and sharp. Also, I did a very precise focusing here as you have it on the Aposumicron. And that's also something people should be aware of that if you have a Sumicron, it will be sharper than a Sumilux, but it will not be as sharp as what you get on an Aposumicron. In the intro of this video, I mentioned that Leica also incorporated a very special feature into the focus ring of that brand new Aposumicron lens. And that's what I'm going to explain in the next couple of minutes. And it starts with the question, how did Leica manage to decrease the focusing distance on this lens to 30 centimeters coming from the 70 centimeters, which is almost a magic number in the Leica lens universe for the Sumicron and the Sumilux lenses we had in hands before. And the best way to explain this is to have a quick look at the macro adapter of Leica M lenses. This is this one here. And here actually you mount the Leica M lens. This clearly is an M mount here. And here, this part of the adapter goes into the camera body. And now imagine that I mount this adapter between the lens and the camera body. And by this, it will lift up the lens and increase the distance from the lens to the sensor plane. Based on the laws of optics, if you increase the distance between the lens and the sensor plane, you will automatically decrease the minimum focusing distance and increase the reproduction ratio. So you get closer into a close-up type situation. And it's well known in all kinds of camera brands that if you buy a macro extension tube, which is just a little tube put between the lens and the camera body, you will increase the reproduction ratio and decrease the minimum focusing distance and in this way get the macro type situation here. Now the special feature I was talking about incorporated in that focus ring is the following. If you look at the scale here, you see that 0.7 meters and everything going beyond towards infinity is engraved and colored in white color. Whereas on the left hand side of 0.7 meters, you actually have a light gray color which at least if you stare at this with your naked eyes can be clearly distinguished from the scale when it starts at 0.7 meters. And there is also a stop here. I push up the volume now and maybe you can hear this. Just try to listen. Almost a little bit like the aperture clicks. And if you focus, you have your normal focus range here between 0.7 and between infinity. And that's about 100 degrees here of rotation you have to travel to go all the way from 0.7 up to infinity. Now, if I'm going down from infinity to 0.7, it finds that stop or click here at 0.7. And then if I rotate further, the scale starts going to 0.6, 0.5, 0.45 and so on. And it is actually a very fine scale you have here, which is great for focusing if you are close to your subject. And if you look at the way the focus ring is traveling here from 0.7. Let's find that stop here. 
And now let's start to travel with the focus ring and watch how long this takes until you come actually to the minimum focusing distance of 0.3 meters. And the way the focus ring travels here is another about 200 degrees. So all in on that focus ring, we have a 300 degree travel way to go from 0.3, the minimum focusing distance up to infinity. And that's very special. And clearly the closer you are to your subject, the more fine you need to do adjustments to actually find focus. And that's why you have 100 degrees from 0.7 to infinity and about 200 degrees below 0.7 until you reach the minimum focusing distance of 0.3 meters. And what Leica here incorporated is easily figured out if you look at the lens now, how it's coming out of the tube. And here on these 100 degrees of travel, clearly if you are closest to the sensor, you're at infinity. Now I start to rotate. The lens comes more and more out of the tube but then if I go beyond 0.7 and down to 0.3, it starts to further travel away as you can easily see here in the video from the sensor plane. And in this way, as I illustrated before by means of the macro adapter, decreasing the minimum focusing distance down to 30 centimeters and increasing the reproduction ratio to one divided by 5.6. There's one more thing to note here and let's go back to this borderline which separates the normal focusing range 0.7 to infinity from the close-up focusing range 0.3 to 0.7. And uh, what you need to know is that beyond or below 0.7, if you go here more to the left-hand side and you get closer than 0.7 meters, you will no longer be able to focus through the optical viewfinder here, which is a range finder. You will need to go via live view to actually find focus or you take the VisoFlex, the electronic viewfinder for Leica M cameras on top of the camera and then in this way use it with focus peaking or you know with magnification to find where you want the focus to sit. And that's something to take note. So the range finder here only works from 0.7 up to infinity which is the 100 degrees here of rotation and then below 0.7 you need to go for live view or for the electronic viewfinder. What I also mentioned at the beginning of this video is that this might be the perfect lens for street photography. And one reason is obvious, that's a very small compact size lens with a low weight and is absolutely non-intrusive if mounted on, let's say, a reasonable camera body. But the other reason is hidden in the specs of the lens. And here is the technical data sheet, which you can download from Leica. And just quickly going through it, we get here all the technical specifications which we already covered. So we have the minimum focusing distance here of 30 centimeters. We have the maximum reproduction ratio here of one divided by 5.6 and so on. What I'm after is the depth of field table. By the way, here we get the lens construction, quite complex, a number of aspherical elements here. And uh, we also get the MTF charts, which I also mentioned quickly already. And they give you information about how well the lens is performing from the optical properties if you move away from the center to the lens to more the corners or borders of the lens. But here is the depth of field table and that's what I actually wanted to show quickly. And I think I've shown depth of field tables before on my channel, but on this lens with its focal length and its sophisticated optical construction, it really gives you very quickly already at medium closed apertures, a reasonable range of depth of field. And let's say for instance, we want to go to an aperture of f5.6 and we want to focus here at eight meters. Then I find here in that cross section that 3.75 meters to infinity is the focus range of the lens where things should be reasonably in focus. So as a rule of thumb, if I study the spec sheet, which I encourage people to do, I know that I've just my aperture ring to f5.6 and my focus ring to eight meters and I keep a minimum focusing distance of four meters to the scene I want to capture, then everything from those four meters on or beyond up to infinity will be sharp and in focus. And that's invaluable information. And I'm going to show this quickly now live on the lens. Let's quickly play through in practical terms what we just learned from the depth of field table. So first of all, we learned if we go to an aperture of f5.6, which we have now adjusted here, and on the focus ring to eight meters of distance, which should be, so here is the dash where we need to align this. Here is seven meters. This is very likely eight meters. 
So if we are somewhere here, we actually get everything in focus if it is reasonably between 3.75 meters and infinity. With these settings, focus is no longer an issue. I can fully now concentrate on my exposure and my image composition because I know with these settings, f5.6, 8 meters on the focus ring, everything beyond 4 meters up to infinity will be sharp and in focus. And that's of course a perfect distance for street photography because most of the time you will be about four or more meters away and then you take a shot of the scene and then you know focus is just taken care of by that zone or range focusing. And that's why I said at the beginning in the intro of the video this might be one of the best lenses for street. You can use it on all kinds of cameras not only on rangefinder cameras and it is the quickest way to have the subjects in focus by just pre-focusing on the lens and then making sure you keep the necessary minimum focusing distance which now by these adjustments is four meters and clearly if you don't like that setting go back to the depth of field table find the parameter set suitable for you and then go and shoot. I want now to show a few sample images taken with that new Aposumicron mounted on the Leica M10R and in this way illustrate that this lens is tech sharp has beautiful bouquet and beautiful background blurriness and is just a fantastic lens but nothing less we expect of course from a Leica Aposomicron lens. I hope you like these sample images as a little demonstration that this lens truly deserves to be an aposumicron from Leica. And this lens can be shot at night, in available light, at daylight. You saw some of the images in the early evening hours, you saw them at you know the blue hour. You saw the close-ups, the bokeh, the nice soft background blurriness, the sharpness of the lens. I think it is a fantastic lens, it might be one of the best Leica M lenses currently available. Here on the cat, for instance, you see how the focus is sitting pinpoint sharp on the left hand eye, but you also see at the head of the cat already how shallow the depth of field is if you shoot at f2.0. And in general, this lens for street, for landscape, for portraits, it's a unique lens, maybe, and that's what I said at the intro to the video, maybe it's the only Leica M lens you really need. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Stay safe and healthy, of course, and peace out.